Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Glad that all of you are here. I had no idea it was supposed to snow. Um, so you'll hear the plow and everything like that, but please be safe out there. And happy daylight savings. Good job. You're here. Um, and I am grateful for that. Just a few announcements as we begin our worship time together. A reminder that this service is being live streamed to our church Facebook page and will be posted to our YouTube channel and our website when it can be today. So if you're not able to make it to a Sunday morning, you can always worship online. You should have on your way in grabbed your communion and your bulletin. If you are worshiping online, you can pause the video whenever you would like to to get your communion elements ready, um, bread or crackers or wine or grape juice, and I will give you more instructions when that time of the service comes. There is a announcement insert in your bulletin. Please do take time to read through that. Mark your calendars accordingly. On the very back, there is the Holy Week schedule and the Lent worship schedule. We are worshiping together on Wednesday evenings during this church season of Lent at 6 p.m. using Holden Evening Prayer. And then um, Holy Week is on there as well because that'll be here before we know it. Please do fill out this perforated side, tear it off, put it in the offering plate if you would like to on your way out of church. And if you are worshiping online, all of this information is in the weekly email. So you can check for it there. If you're not getting that information and you would like to, um, give us a call or send us an email and we can put you on that list. I think that's all the announcements that I'll share with you this morning. Um, I invite you to take a deep breath, 
to center yourselves and ground yourselves in this time and this place for this time of worship. And when you are ready, I invite you to stand as we begin our service with the confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love. And help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our reading is from the third chapter from Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it's from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Word of God, word of life. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen. I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stone those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So our gospel reading for today, that one that I just read, it's usually one of those that you just kind of read and then move on because it doesn't really fill you with warm, fuzzy feelings. Um, In fact, it's not in the children's Bible, obviously, where you're doing an Old Testament reading today for Sunday school, because it's kind of harsh, and it's hard to understand. There's this talk about Herod wanting to kill Jesus. Jesus calls Herod a fox, and then you hear about prophets being stoned and killed. So it isn't a super warm, fuzzy message. 
And as much as this gospel story seems like one that doesn't fill us with these warm, fuzzy, and loving thoughts, I'd like to look at it in a way today that will make us think of these verses as ones that can express love. Because what these verses say to us is, we need to be a community of love and belonging. We need to be a community of love and belonging. That's how you could paraphrase what Jesus says about gathering Jerusalem's children just as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. It's an image that I think a lot of us maybe don't think about on a regular basis, a hen gathering her brood under her wings. My guess is that unless you grew up on a farm or live on a farm or visit a farm or unless you have chickens in your backyard, this image isn't super familiar. It's not part of our regular vocabulary for us. And I've said this before, so most of you know that everything I learned about farming, I learned from Little House on the Prairie. So I always have to do some research when these kind of images come up. Luckily, I have a friend who lives on a farm in Iowa. So I called her up last week when I was doing some sermon research and I, told, I said to her, just tell me about hens. What do you know? And I lucked out because she's been learning a lot about chickens lately because her daughter is about to get her first chicks for her 4-H project. And I just think that sounds adorable. You know, those little fuzzy yellow chicks are cute, right? That's about what I know. I do know some of the things that she told me, though, because obviously the mother chicken lays her eggs and then sits on them until they hatch. I knew that ahead of time. And then after they're hatched, the mother hen will continue to sit on them to keep them warm and to protect them, to keep them safe. And then she will gradually let those baby chicks explore, but they're always within her reach. And when those baby chicks are first born, those like little yellow fluff balls are trying to get around. And so the mother does what she can to try to keep them warm and safe, to keep them close to her, because the mother hen knows that without her care, they'll die. And when I asked my friend why the hen needs to gather her brood, she told me that the mother hen just knows that her chicks can't survive without her. They need that protection, and they need the mother's shelter and the warmth that she offers. And it turns out that these hens will stop at nothing to protect and shelter and defend their young, even if it costs them their life. So this is the image that we hear about Jesus today. And I think it's a very beautiful and a powerful image. It's an image that Jesus uses in our gospel story today when he's talking to people who had lost their way and they had forgotten who they were. They forgot who was there to embrace them with open arms, like a hen who gathers her chicks. Jesus, we hear today, was weeping over this lost city, these lost people. And Jesus is the mother hen who is trying as hard as she can to gather her children, but they just won't hear her. He says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. Jesus here is inviting them, he's inviting us into this community of love and belonging under Jesus' wings. Because under Jesus' wings, we know who we are. We are loved and forgiven children of God. And under Jesus' wings, we have this safe place to explore what it means to be loved and forgiven children of God. And under Jesus' wings, we can listen to each other in the midst of our differences, and we can believe that who we are matters to God. Today we get this powerful, beautiful image, and we hear that we are all invited into the security of God's love and brought under the protection of Jesus' wings. And enveloped in the arms of Jesus, we can live into the people that Jesus calls us to be, a people who are a community, a brood, if you may say that, gathered under the same protective, loving wings, and then therefore we can give witness to that love in our world. God always invites us with open arms into this loving embrace of grace and forgiveness, into this community of love and belonging. Even when we think we have lost our way, even when we don't listen, we are embraced by the one who would willingly put themselves in harm's way to protect their children. 
we are embraced by the one who would expose themselves to all kind of danger to ensure that their children are safe. And we are embraced by the one who would give their life to protect their children. We are embraced by the one whose love for us goes all the way to the cross and rolls away the stone from the empty tomb. We have this assurance that we are scooped up into the loving arms, the loving embrace of God, who gives us a community of love and belonging, who gathers us together, and who gives us security and protection and love and grace and forgiveness, just like a hen who gathers her brood under her wings. And for that, we give thanks to God. I invite you to stand for our hymn of the day, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer. church, let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and for all who are in need. Let us pray. You gather the church into a community of mercy and grace. Unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of oppression, and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise up leaders committed to love and justice. Nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism, openness to new ideas, and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You hear us when we cry to you. Attend to those expecting a child and console those who have experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are ill or grieving. 
Merciful God, receive our prayer. You welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those who have labors on earth are ended and who now rest with you. On the final day, gather all of us with them in your loving arms. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I invite you to get your communion baggies ready. And if you're worshiping online, I invite you to get your bread or crackers or wine or grape juice prepared. I'll let you know when the time is to get those out and to consume them. The Lord is with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Jesus. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. It's today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to peel off that top layer of the cup that goes to the wafer. You may eat that, and this is the body of Christ given for you. If you're worshiping online, I invite you to eat your bread or your crackers. This is the body of Christ given for you. And if you are worshiping with somebody who does not yet receive the sacrament and would like a blessing, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on their forehead or in the space in front of them and say the words, you are a loved child of God. I invite you to peel off that next layer that goes to the grape juice, or if you're worshiping at home, to drink that. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. 
Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. I invite you to stand for our sending song. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.